Hey, and welcome back to the Hit Zero Show. I know it's been a long time. It's been a while since we've had an episode, and it's for a good reason. The climate of our sport is very, very, very different now than it was a few weeks ago. The episodes that we did last actually touch a lot on the current situation in our sport. For those that have not heard, which I find kind of hard to believe at this point, uh, Jerry Harris from Navarro Cheer, uh, from the Netflix show and from the team, um, is currently under arrest for some pretty serious accusations. If you haven't looked, if you haven't heard about that, go just Google his name. Uh, we're not going to get into details of uh, the charges just because of the explicit nature of them, uh, but you can read all about it online. We talked about how Athlete A had started bringing about a discussion of abuse in our sport. That episode got a lot of great feedback from you guys. I, I truly, truly appreciate it. In fact, that episode got me into contact with some, um, some pretty amazing people that helped to push some things forward. In the second episode that we did, the most recent episode, we touched on investigation going on that I told you guys I did not want to release any information about, um, but that I wanted to tell you guys that the discussion that we had begun from that first episode had started to make a change and that there were actively think, you know, active uh, investigations happening that would help us to move forward as a sport to bring this terrible thing to light uh, of this abuse, you know, for, of our kids. And now you guys see what I was talking about because we had these discussions, because we pushed our kids to be honest with us and to tell us about what's going on, and because we were willing to listen, we have now made a huge wave and are now starting to see change happen. I want to thank you first and foremost for being willing to face this problem head on because it's, as we can see, uh, it's made a huge change. Uh, there is still a lot of work to be done, but the ball is rolling and we're having these conversations. Just by being open and being willing to listen to our athletes and giving them a safe space to talk to us about things that they've experienced has led to a huge leap forward. And we need to continue that. The, the, my goal or my hope is that all of our programs are starting to sit down and talk to our athletes about this. Granted, I know it's not an easy conversation, and especially with some of our younger ones, you know, that are confused, they're not really sure, like, what's happening? You know, what is, you know, what does all this stuff mean? I understand that can be a very, very challenging thing, and perhaps bringing in an expert to talk to these young ones and how to communicate what's happening so that they can understand kind of the climate of, of the sport currently and the brevity of, of what's happening. But all gyms at this point in all programs need to be taking steps towards communicating with your athletes about what happened and also communicating with your community about what steps you're taking to ensure the safety of your athletes. Right now, transparency and honesty is probably the biggest and most important thing in our sport because we're, we're seeing the results of, of not being honest and not being transparent right now. There are lists of people that aren't allowed in our sport uh, that are growing very quickly. We're finding a lot of discrepancies with lists uh, you know, from different organizations like USASF and USA Cheer that are not up to date and that people are not happy about. Um, USA Today did a an amazing job bringing to light a lot of things in our sport that people either speculated about or people have been saying for years. I've seen that a lot. I've been saying this for years. Um, but one of the most startling things was the amount of people that are involved in our sport that are registered sex offenders that are that were not on that list of banned uh, banned people, and that's that's horrifying. And that number probably isn't even 
fully accurate of how many there are. This is just what USA Today was able to uncover in their investigation. And there's, there's no surprise to me if there is more, way more than that. And so I think now we're, we're at a, a pivotal moment where as parents, as coaches, as gym owners, as gym directors, um, and even as some of our older athletes, we're all at this crucial point where we can shift cheer into what it should be. And the way we do that is we continue to have these conversations. We continue to take the right steps, reporting people that you know ha have done something inappropriate. Um, but we've got the ball rolling on this topic, and we've we've made again huge leaps forward. But it's only just beginning. You know, our work is not done until every kid can do cheer in a safe environment and can talk to us and feel confident and safe in telling us when they're hurt. You know, it was, it was very disheartening to see uh, when, you know, the, the two victims that came forward that the big story has been about, when they came forward to see some of the responses uh, from, on social media of people that were almost, you know, they were victim blaming, that were saying they're just trying to, to, to take his money or anytime you get famous, people try to take you down. The fact that there was any doubt that what was happening was not true is, is heartbreaking. I mean, innocent until proven guilty is perfectly fine. I agree with you on due process of law and innocent until proven guilty. But when you shift away from that and you start to point fingers of blame at children and you start to say things like they're making this up you know, to get his money or to ruin his fame, you know, that is abhorrent. It, it mortified me. Like, if you start to point fingers at victims or say that, you know, make snide comments about how it, you know, probably isn't true or, you know, there's no way he did this and this and that, that's the reason why victims don't come forward, is that exact reason is, is that, is, is victim blaming. So, if you want to wait for the legal system to do its job, I completely respect that. But don't cross the line of blaming victims or of making or, or making them feel like they're they're not listened to because when that happens, we start all over again. And the last thing we want is for our kids to not feel like they can come forward when they're hurt. Because that's what's been happening already. So in the upcoming weeks, we're going to see more things come out. It's, it's, there's no way around it. It's inevitable. And like we mentioned, you know, in the last couple of episodes, we need to be ready for it because our athletes are starting to speak up. And if we're not ready to listen or if we're not willing to be open-minded to say, hey, this, is, this, this could really be true what they're saying then we set ourselves up for failure and we stop this progress that we have moving forward. Now, there are definite steps that are needed to be taken with mandatory reporting, you know, whether that be through CPS or through police, you know, that, that really is, is dependent on your region. But what I can tell you is the, the number one thing you can do to cover your bases, protect the athletes, protect your program, protect yourselves, is to not sit on this information. If an athlete comes forward, you need to have a plan in place of how to report it, uh, who to contact, and then also if you haven't already, how to, to have this discussion with your teams, if you're an all-star uh, program, um, you know, with your teams, with your families, um, with your kids. But as of right now, the biggest thing we can focus on is transparency and honesty and having a set plan that everyone is on board with, with how we're going to move forward to ensure that our sport survives this terrible situation that we're having to deal with and that we are putting the focus of our athletes, the safety of our athletes at the forefront of every decision we make because the kids are what is most important. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this episode. Um, I'm excited to, um, to get past this rough time that we're in and to see how great uh, our sport comes out on the other side. But please continue to have these conversations, continue to talk to your, your athletes and your families. 
um, and let's come out on the other side bigger and stronger and safer for everyone uh, at the end. We'll see you on the next episode.